Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be integrating a rational function x over x squared plus 1 dx. And this might look like a very simple problem and it actually isn't too hard, but I'll be presenting three methods. Can you solve this problem in three different ways? Let's find out. So the first method is kind of boring. I just want to get it out of the way. The usual method, right? And obviously the second and third, in my opinion, are cooler, but you're going to decide. So for my first method, I want to go ahead and use substitution and u substitution. So u equals x squared plus 1, and then du is going to be the derivative of this, which is 2x multiplied by dx. Now, why did I pick x squared plus 1 as u? Because its derivative is x. So whenever you have two polynomials, most of the time you pick the one with the higher power, especially if they're one apart right? What happens if they're two apart? That's a different story. So in another video, maybe we can talk about x divided by x cubed plus 1 dx, right? So to continue the problem, we're going to notice that we don't have uh, 2x dx, we only have x dx, which means we have to multiply both sides by 1 half to get x dx. Easy, right? Let's go ahead and substitute it. x dx will be replaced with 1 half of du. I'm going to go ahead and take out the 1 half because that's a constant it can be taken out, think about sigma, and we have u at the bottom, which is the denominator. Awesome, this is just 1 over u du, right? If you don't see what I'm talking about, write this as 1 over u du, and obviously, this is the same thing as 1 over x dx. What is the integral of 1 over u du, right? It is ln. So the power rule obviously does not apply here, because if you apply power rule to this, then you get something like this. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. u to the power 0 divided by 0. That's definitely undefined. It's not like 0 to the power 0 where we can talk about numbers. Anyways, that's a different story. I keep bringing that up. So this is going to become 1 half ln u. Normally we would use absolute value, but in this case you don't need to because u cannot be negative. Can't even be 0 in the real world, right? So in other words, x squared plus 1 is greater than 0 for all x values that are in the set of real numbers. So our result becomes then 1 half ln x squared plus 1 plus c. Don't forget the constant. It's a big deal. Okay? Cool. That's the first method. Kind, kind of boring. But it's pretty standard. So if you are new to, you know, calculus 1, uh, this would definitely be something helpful. Second method is going to use a really cool way, and that's called partial fractions. Are you familiar with that? I'm planning to make a video on that one anytime soon. But whenever we have something like this, we want to try to factor the denominator first. For example, if you had x squared minus 1, you would definitely go for a difference of 2 squared, right? Can we factor this? Is it factorable? Well, it depends on who you ask. If you ask the, a complex guy, he'll, or he or she will say yes. So, yes, it can be factored, and if you remember, and especially if you've seen some videos on A plus BI, my other channel, right, you should know that this is actually factorable into X plus I and X minus I. Think about a complex number and its conjugate, sum of two squares is what it is, right? So, sum of two, two squares can be factored in the complex world. So far, so good? Okay, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this and kind of write it as a sum of two fractions with these denominators. Of course, we're going to split the denominators, but I don't know what is in the numerator. Now, notice that the denominators are going to be linear, so the numerator has to be one degree less at most, which means it has to be a constant. There's nothing less than that, by the way. So our fractions are going to be like this. A, which is a constant, divided by x plus i, plus b, divided by x minus i. Awesome. The next step is, since this is equal to x over x squared plus 1, to make a common denominator and set the numerators equal. Why just numerators? Because the denominators are already equal. We know that, right? So let's make a common denominator. That means we're going to multiply a by x minus i and b by x plus i. And then we get the numerator. So after being multiplied, the numerators are equal to numerators. Okay? Cool, i is a constant, so don't worry too much about it. It's just like 1, but it's just imaginary. So let's go ahead and distribute this. ax minus ai, 
kind of like artificial intelligence, right? Plus bx plus bi equals x. And now put the x terms together. a plus b is the coefficient. And then bi minus ai. You don't need to factor out i because b and i, b, i and I, a, i are both constants. Now, notice that on the right-hand side, there's no constant term. So this is 0. And the coefficient of x is supposed to be 1 because we have 1x on the right-hand side. Make sense? Cool. This gives us a system of equations. It's linear. a plus b is equal to 1 and b i equals a i, which implies that b equals a. If you replace b with a, you get 2a equals 1, which means a is equal to 1 half, which means b is also equal to 1 half because a and b are equal. Wow, that was easy, right? Now we found the a and b values. We're going to go ahead and substitute here. So our expression is going to become a, which is 1 half, over x plus i, plus b, which is 1 half again, over x minus i. Well, wait a minute, does that look weird? You have like a complex fraction. By the way, I don't mean complex numbered fraction, but it's kind of like a fraction in a fraction. So let's take out the 1 half and put these two together like nicely. And then we're going to go ahead and integrate this. Let's go ahead and do it right here because this is going to be our integral, right? And now how do you integrate this? It's already separated. One half, you can take it all the way out. Now the integral of 1 over x plus i is ln, like think about 1 over x, it's ln x, but this is just ln x plus i, plus ln x minus i. I'm ignoring the absolute value here, forgive me for that, plus c. Awesome. But wait a minute, didn't we get something different with the first method? Yes, but using properties of logarithms, you can basically write this as the log of a product, which gives you the exact same thing. And this brings us to the end of the second method only, so don't leave because we still have to do the third method. And third method is actually really cool, but again, it's up to you to decide which one is the coolest. All right, you're gonna let me know, right? So here's what we're gonna do. When you see x squared plus one, what are you thinking? What should you be thinking? You should be thinking x equals tangent theta. Yes, this does the trick. And dx is gonna be the integral, I mean, the derivative, what am I talking about? The derivative of tangent, which is secant squared, theta, d theta. And of course, you're going to replace x with tangent. And then at the bottom, you're going to get tangent squared plus 1 times dx, which is secant squared theta plus 1. Secant squared theta d theta. Now, it's very important to know your identities in trigonometry. If you knew this equals secant squared 1 plus tangent squared, which is very important, they'll cancel out, leaving us with tangent. Well, how do you integrate tangent theta? Easy. You just write it as sine over cosine and then use u substitution again. But we already used u, did we? I don't know. Uh, so let's use something else. How about t? If cosine theta is t, t equals cosine theta, and then dt is going to be negative sine theta d theta. Wait a minute. I have a positive sign. No worries. Put a minus sign, put a minus sign. There's always a solution, right? So now we get the following. This is negative. Negative sine theta d theta is going to be dt dt divided by t. But that's just ln with a negative sign, negative ln t plus c. But what is t? t is cosine theta, so it's just going to be negative ln cosine theta. Wait a minute, is that the answer? Nope. We still have to back substitute. What is theta? Well, I don't know what theta is, but I know that tangent theta is equal to x. So let's draw a right triangle. That's a really cool way to do it. Tangent theta is equal to x, right? So now, from Pythagorean theorem, some people say Pythagorean, it's Pythagorean theorem. Cosine is going to be 1 over that, so it's going to be negative ln, 1 over square root of x squared plus 1 plus c. Wait a minute, how can we convert this? Easy. We're going to write this as uh, x squared plus 1 to the power 1 half, but it's in the denominator. So I'm going to write it as x squared plus 1 to the power negative 1 half with another negative in front of the ln it'll be taken care of because you're going to move it over here, bam, it's just going to take care of the one half here, and we're going to end up with the exact same solution. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.